Okay, uh, welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling, a virtual college fair. Uh, so happy to have you here, or if you're watching this recording, you're gonna hear from six amazing uh, colleges and universities. Uh, a few things, if you are here live with us, the Q&A button is the only way that you'll be able to ask a question. Everything I'm saying, I'll throw into the chat as well, but that Q&A is the only way that our panelists will be able to see uh, what you're saying. So please use that Q&A if you have a question. Sign up for more sessions. We have more tonight after this one. And a recording of this is available on our website at StriveScan. Um, and it'll also be available to our panelists and sent out to anyone who signed up for this. Um, with that, we are going to kick it off with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming for watching this presentation. Uh, my name is Andrew, and I'm a uh, regional admissions counselor at University of Alaska Fairbanks. I'm based in Southern California to better serve students like you here in California and Nevada. Uh, and uh, please reach out to me. I'm actually a UAF alum. I graduated a couple of years ago. I lived on campus and off campus, and I'm from Ohio. So I know what it's like to move to Alaska from out of state, from far away, and uh, I'd love to talk with you. Uh, so UAF, uh, we are a small to medium-sized public research university based in Alaska's interior up here towards the middle of the state. So what that means is you're going to be experiencing a particularly unique living environment complete with snowy winters and uh, varying amounts of sunlight, uh, you know, temperature lows of maybe negative 40, negative 50 throughout the winter. Um, with an average of probably negative 15. And then uh, temperatures getting up to the 60s and 70s in the summer with the midnight sun. You'll also have a chance to engage with wildlife on campus. Uh, mainly moose is gonna be the most exciting one, uh, but you'll also see fox uh, and a number of other uh, critters running around. Uh, and then uh, you of course will be able to see the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights right from campus. Uh, it's very visible this far north, just 200 miles south of the Arctic Circle. If you haven't had a chance to visit Fairbanks or our campus, I highly recommend taking a virtual tour on our website. I always like to let students know that UAF, uh, you're really going to be getting all the best parts of college, everything you're looking forward to, but in the farthest north U.S. city. So, you know, here's what a sunset, uh, sunrise and sunset looks like on the winter solstice. Uh, here is what your backyard's going to look like, just black spruce trees and country roads. You can even see the Alaskan pipeline there. But you're going to live in a residence hall. You're going to have, you know, cafes, student rec center, libraries. Uh, different kind of events going on uh, all the time and you'll have student traditions as well as you can see here our student tradition is snapping a photo in front of the temperature sign when the temperature temperature breaks negative 40 for the first time each winter it is called the negative 40 club uh, you are more than welcome to strip down to your swimsuit or you can keep your clothes on uh, like I did if you are a chicken like me just some highlights about UAF. Uh, we are Alaska's flagship university. We're about 100 years old. We're also a land, sea, and space grant university, which means we get funding to uh, carry out research in all three of those fields uh, and offer you know, research experiences to our students in all three of those fields. We're also a world leader in climate change and Arctic research. So there is truly no better place uh, to study climate change uh, and our changing planet and uh, ways to uh, help keep our planet healthy and uh, progress forward in science uh, than up in Fairbanks. Uh, and our, our campus is, uh, like I said, teetering on small to medium in size. We've got a little over 5,000 students on our campus. We have a 10 to 1 student to professor ratio, which means you're going to get a lot of face time with your professors, with your classmates. Uh, UAF in general is just a pretty down to earth, closely knit community. It even has some overlap with Fairbanks as a city. There's a lot of uh, overlap with the two different communities, especially in the arts, uh, live events, you know, readings, music, things like that. Uh, everybody kind of gets along and takes care of one another. We offer um, 13 online bachelor's degrees. We offer WUI for all students. So by coming from California or Nevada, you automatically qualify for WUI. We also offer in-state tuition for military and veterans and their family. And we offer a very wide selection of amazing Thai food. Uh, I think it's actually closer to 30 Thai restaurants in Fairbanks now. Student life is very active. I like to let students know that we are not a party school, but we are a social school. So whether it's uh, having a, a movie night in our student center or hosting a pop con, which is kind of like a comic con sort of thing that happens every winter in our student center, or if the physics department is putting on a stargazing night outside of the right cart building up on uh, the northern end of campus, there's always going to be something to do, especially in the winter. Uh, so that's the fall into the winter is a really exciting time because there's a ton of stuff going on. You're making new friends uh, and it's like nowhere else you've been before. We also have 25 miles of hiking trails right on campus, right in your backyard. 
Uh, and then we have a lot of uh, media opportunities, too, if you're interested in the college newspaper, college radio station, college literary magazine. Uh, there's a lot going on in our campus uh, to keep you engaged and uh, help you grow. We also have a number of different degree pathway options for you at UAF. So whether you're interested in an endorsement or certificate or that to your associate's degree program, we do have a community and technical college built into UAF. Uh, a lot of you are probably a little bit more interested in the four-year bachelor's program. And if you uh, really love UAF and Fairbanks, you might stay on for a master's or a PhD program. And uh, I'd like to tell students too that, uh, um, you know, coming up to UAF, moving to Fairbanks, getting your degree up here, you're going to leave with more than a degree. You're going to leave with life experiences that make you impressive, that make you stand out. Uh, you will be the most interesting person in the room uh, once you've lived in Fairbanks and studied in Fairbanks. Like I said, we are a world leader in climate change and Arctic research. We have a number of really impressive and uh, nationally recognized facilities, including the Geophysical Institute, which studies weather and the Aurora Borealis and snow and ice, as well as Poker Flat Research Range. Uh, we are the only university in the world to have our own private rocket launch site at Poker Flat. And um, our most popular majors are gonna be STEM majors, but we have a number of other uh, uh, popular programs as well. Um, including our some of our business degrees are in our School of Management. Uh, and we also have opportunities for students who would like to become a firefighter or an emergency responder. Uh, we give you actual experience in the field while you're completing your bachelor's degree. Uh, as far as financial aid and scholarships go, here's, like, here's a little glimpse of what your tuition will look like. Here is the Bowie number coming from California and Nevada, or if you're coming from a military family or completing a degree online, there is your online tuition rate. And applications are still open for fall 2021 if you're looking to transfer to UAF now or if you're a year or two out, our applications for fall 2022 will open on June 16th. Please just send us those in progress uh, or unofficial transcripts in order for us to look at your application. And uh, yeah, like I said, my name is Andrew. I'm an out-of-state student uh, based in uh, Southern California, and I look forward to talking with you. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Belmont University. Thanks, Christy. Um, hey, y'all. My name is Deanna, and I serve as Assistant Director of Admissions here at Belmont University. I'm so glad uh, to be here with you tonight. If you're not familiar with Belmont, we are a student-centered private Christian, Christian institution located directly across from Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, as Nashville's university, we've been host to a number of incredible opportunities on the world stage, including CMA Country Christmas and uh, two previous presidential debates, including the most recent one that happens, a final uh, presidential debate in October of 2020. So I wanted to give you kind of a broad overview of, of what Belmont is. Uh, we are glad to be home to about 8,200 students on campus. The vast majority of those are our undergraduate students who, pay, who make up about 6,600 of the 8,200 students we have on campus. It's a far cry from where we started in 1890 with just 90 students. Um, we've got students from every country, uh, 28 countries in every state in the US. Uh, and one of the things we've been most proud about, despite our growth over the years, is our average classroom size. You won't find a classroom on campus that has two or 300 seats available. Uh, most you'll have it in a general education class is typically around 30. So your average classroom size is going to be about 19. Uh, additionally, we've been blessed to be put in a unique situation to be able to grow our faculty number uh, as our population on campus has grown. And that's allowed us to keep a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. Uh, your faculty will become like peers and will likely know a lot about you, maybe more than you even want them to know sometimes. But that is the relationship we want you all to develop while you're here at Belmont. So at Belmont, we've got over 100 programs of study. On this page, you'll see some of our most popular majors, along with our newest majors. Um, of course, since we're located in Music City, music business, songwriting, commercial music tend to be our larger programs. But one program that may surprise you is nursing. Our nursing students have a really um, unique opportunity uh, because Nashville, if you don't know, is known as uh, the healthcare capital of the country. So we've got over 500 healthcare organizations and oper operations within Nashville city limits. So students get a ton of opportunities to get industry experience while they're on campus as well. 
Um, now that you kind of have a brief overview uh, of what Belmont is, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you're going to need to do to become a Bruin. So we need an online application, either the Belmont application or the common application, either is sufficient for us, we get notified the exact same way. And then we need some supplemental items. So we're going to need uh, transcripts from every college you've previously attended, even if it was a college you went to 10 years ago, you took one class uh, through that institution we need all college transcripts to give us a clearer picture of who you are as a student. Uh, we're, we're gonna need high school transcripts and or test scores. We are a test optional institution at this point. If you have less than 24 college units when you apply. So 24 is gonna be the magic number for you all. 24 units that you earned when you apply, we just need those college transcripts. If you've got less than that, we're gonna need at least your high school transcript in addition to that. So typically once we get your online application and your transcripts or all of the rest of your supplemental items, you get a decision from us within about seven to 10 business days. We do everything old school. We're gonna mail you your decision. So you're not gonna be able to find it online or in an email, anything like that. So you get a decision uh, pretty quickly. We want you guys to have enough time to be able to make the decisions that you need to make to decide where you wanna spend the next two, three, four, however long uh, you're completing that bachelor's degree. We wanna give you enough time to make the best decision for yourself and family as well. Once you decide Belmont is kind of where you wanna be, you're gonna pay a $250 enrollment deposit. That's just gonna secure your space. It's gonna give you access to create your My Belmont account, which you, you likely have a student portal of some type at your current institutions. Um, that's gonna where, be where your email is housed, where you're eventually gonna register for classes, where you're gonna find the housing application where you're gonna find your degree audit that's gonna show you exactly what's come over and, and what you've got left as well. So that deposit is gonna kind of open the floodgates, if you will, for everything else that you're gonna to need to do uh, in order to become a Bruin on campus. I wanted to give you just a kind of a brief snapshot of who we are in our office. We have a transfer team, then we've got a first time freshman team. Um, on the screen are our transfer counselors. You can see the, the colleges that we represent. Um, if you have any questions, don't know who your counselor would be, certainly let me know. I'm happy to facilitate that. Uh, but thanks so, so much for coming out tonight. And uh, let me know if you have any questions at all. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Boise State University. Great, thank you so much. I'm Ronnie Boynton and I'm from Boise State University and here to tell you a little bit about our institution and glad that you are tuning in here. Um, so I'm going to show you a few different slides and let you know a little bit about Boise State. We are a large campus um, located in the capital of Idaho. Boise is the capital of the state and lots to be able to take part in in our, our beautiful campus. So this is just one, one picture of one of our more modern buildings on campus. But like I said, we are a fairly large institution having over 26,000 students. Now, that might seem like a really large number, but something to keep in mind is that that's the number of our full-time students who are also, um, some of them might be working toward upper degree. So they might be getting a master's degree or a doctoral degree. So to make that a little bit smaller, over 17,000 students is what our full-time undergraduate students are um, in person, because we do have several online degrees, but this is our amount of students that are on campus on a regular basis. To make that even smaller, our average class size is 31 students. So hopefully that feels a little bit more manageable. Certainly when you get into your major, you're then going to find that you're seeing the same students in your classes. Something that we like to say is that you don't just go to Boise State, but it's our hope that you're going to begin an adventure at Boise State. There's so many opportunities to get connected. And because we are located in the heart of Idaho, in the capital, city of Boise, we're able to connect in so many ways. We get transfer students from all over the country coming to us either for our outdoor adventures or looking for some of the music scene. We have lots of art festivals, lots of things taking place outside in our downtown area. So kind of a unique opportunity to get the amenities of a big city, but then have a small community feel. So our campus is located right in the downtown area. But we've got this beautiful river that goes right through campus. So the amount of activities that take place on the river just as a fun way for students to cool off, have some outdoor adventures. We got lots of hiking trails in the mountains, snowboarding, skiing, very close to campus. So again, the outdoor adventures are lots of ways that students are transferring to us. 
But let's talk a little bit about academics. Again, since we're a large institution, lots of course offerings for you. So we are close to 190 majors and minors that you can choose from, ranging from kinesiology to communication, um, sociology, lots of options for you to choose from. This is a list of our top 10 majors that students choose from. Pre-business is the most common because our College of Business is quite competitive in looking for students that already have um, an understanding of what business aspect they want to go into. So it could be human resource management, marketing, accountancy, finance, lots of options. And then our nursing program is also quite competitive. So those are the top that our transfer students are coming in and wanting to major in. Some of the basics of transferring to Boise State, we try to keep it nice and simple, not too difficult to get the process started. So if you're interested in Boise State, you just have to complete an online application for admission. We've got a $50 application fee, and then we need your official college transcript. We're not needing letters of recommendation, personal statements, we're just sticking to the basics. If you have under 14 completed transfer credits, then we will need your high school information as well. But that's kind of our cutoff mark. Once you have at least 14 completed college credits after high school, we will admit you just based on the college credits you've completed. And you don't have to wait and wonder if you're going to be admitted. These are our admission standards. If you've got a 2.25 cumulative GPA, you're automatically admitted to Boise State. Now, if you've completed an associate's degree, then we're just looking at at least a 2.0 cumulative GPA to be admitted. So. Again, you don't have to wait and wonder, you just submit those application materials, and we'll admit you based on this criteria. You might be wondering about scholarships, opportunities like that. So our out-of-state tuition is about $25,000 for the full academic year. To help pay for some of that cost, we've got a couple of non-resident scholarships. If you're coming in with at least a 3.4, we would award you the treasure scholarship, which is about $8,400 for two full years. We're also part of the WUI program, the Western Undergraduate Exchange. So coming from California, great opportunity. If you have at least a 3.7 or above, this will essentially cut tuition in half. And that again is for two full years. There's not an additional application that you need to, like to, you don't need to submit for the scholarship. You just need to make sure that you apply by December 15th. This is our priority deadline for the fall semester. So that is obviously passed for fall of 2021. So if you're interested in fall of 2022, by this December, you want to submit all of your application materials and then you will be considered for our academic scholarships. We will still admit students for fall semester, fall of 2021, but again, that scholarship deadline has passed. If anyone is interested in spring semester, we also admit for each spring semester and we award scholarships based on this criteria as well. That priority deadline is October 1st. So if you meet this criteria, apply for everything by October 1st, you could then be awarded a scholarship for spring semester. Here's another pretty picture of campus. There's no shortage of getting connected, getting involved, lots of opportunities to engage with student clubs, organizations, and a big highlight on campus are our athletics. The blue turf is something that's so fun for our students to come, get loud and proud, cheer on our Broncos, and enjoy free tickets to every home football game, as well as gymnastics, basketball, all of our major Division I sporting events. So that's all the information I have for you on Boise State, but feel free to reach out, happy to answer any questions. As the Senior Transfer Admission Counselor, I'm happy to ease your process in transferring as best I can. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, we have University of Iowa. So hi everyone, I'm Erin Monroe, and I'm one of the instructors of admission with the University of Iowa. I'm regionally based for our team and live in California. So if you have questions about the transfer process, come to Hawkeye, I am your go-to for contact. Pictured here, we have what look what our campus looks like. So the University of Iowa is a large public institution located in Iowa City, Iowa. We are over on the eastern side of the state. 
The nearest airport is just 20 minutes north of our campus. So if you're flying to us from a little bit of a distance, we're very simple to get to once you arrive in Iowa City. Once you arrive on our campus, this is what we look like. If you look close. I get the impression there might have been some technical difficulties there. So I'm oops. see Erin is back. She's able to connect quickly. If not, we might have to skip down to University of Wyoming. Um, yeah, you're cutting out to your audio is cutting as well. Um, we are going to just uh, is it OK if I put you down to the um, after University of Alaska Anchorage at the end? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right. So next up we have University of Wyoming. How's it going everyone? My name is Tanner McClure and I am an admissions representative for the University of Wyoming. Um, I represent the entire state of California. So I represent students just like yourselves. Um, I was a transfer student also uh, to the University of Wyoming, uh, so I know how the transfer system works. Um, I had a great time while I was here, so I'll, I'll get rolling and talk a little about what we have here. So the University of Wyoming is located in Laramie, Wyoming. It's about 30 miles north of the Colorado border. Um, so we're about two hours north of Denver, um, and we are in the foothills of like the Snowy Range mountain range. We have just below 12,000 students total at the University of Wyoming, uh, making us like a mid-sized university. I like to say we're not too big, not too small, we're just right. Uh, we have a 15 to 1 student to faculty ratio um, with 90% of our classes taught by professors. So um, most of your professors, especially being transfer students, or excuse me, most of your classes, especially being transfer students, are going to be taught by actual professors. Uh, those 10% of courses that are not taught by a transfer actual professors are what are called discussion groups. And those are your usual general education courses where we have extra courses attached to them uh, for discussion. That way, if you have any questions in your classes that are you know, 80 to 90 students, you can still get those asked on a face-to-face -face basis. Um, we have an average class size of 30. Uh, so the University of Wyoming is continually expanding to increase our faculty load. That way we can keep our class sizes down and keep our student to faculty ratio at an acceptable level. And then what's really cool, and it's favorite statistic of mine. Uh, last year, even with COVID going on, 92% uh, of our graduates had a job or were in graduate school within six months of graduation. So we have students represented from all around the world. I myself am from Southern California and I came to the University of Wyoming. Um, we have students represented from all 50 states and over 90 countries. About two thirds of our students come from the state of Wyoming. Um, and then we are ranked the number one small college town in the United States of America. Uh, so the University of Wyoming, our big draw to most students are our incredible outdoor, um, our access to outdoor resources. Uh, so we have our own ski and snowboarding slope about a half hour from campus. Um, we're 15 minutes from world-class climbing, hiking, mountain biking. Uh, there's 2.9 million acres of national forest all within an hour of the University of Wyoming. So if outdoors is something you're into, we're probably the place for you. I like to say we have everything here at the University of Wyoming you could possibly imagine doing outside except for deep sea fishing because we're not near an ocean. Uh, so we are a part of Division One Athletics. We are in a Mountain West Conference. We have club sports here at the University of Wyoming. When I was a student, I played club rugby for the university. Uh, many of my friends and colleagues also played club sports. We have intramural sports, which are awesome. Um, you can compete on a less competitive level and just have a great time. It's a great way to meet new people. Um, our fine arts programs are second to none. Uh, once again, another awesome way to meet new people. And then with all that being said, with over our 300 with over having 300 clubs and organizations, um, there's something here for everybody. And if there's not, it's super easy to start your own club or student organization. Um, there's student government here, so it's very easy for students to get involved and work with other students to change things on campus if they want something new or to keep them the same if they like it the way they are. And then we are the number the only four year school in the entire state of Wyoming. So the entire state backs the brown and gold, cowboys and cowgirls, everywhere you go, everyone's saying go pokes. Um, it's a really cool thing to be a part of. So we have over 200 different areas of study. I like to say everything from accounting to zoology. And then the University of Wyoming will also allow you to double major or major and minor in pretty much anything you want. Um, you can major in engineering and nursing at the same time. I wouldn't recommend it, that'd be very hard. Uh, but if that's something you're into, we'll support you in doing that. 
Um, we are the, we have the largest study abroad endowment in the entire nation. Uh, so if you're interested in studying abroad at the University of Wyoming, we have crazy scholarship opportunities. It makes it very, very affordable for students to go pretty much anywhere in the world. Like you can see there, we have over 400 sites. Uh, so our students have the ability to go pretty much wherever they want at little to no extra cost than the regular tuition here at the University of Wyoming. So these are the way our scholarships work for our out-of-state students. Uh, at the University of Wyoming, if you have an associate's degree and over a 3.4 um, GPA, you're going to be qualified for the Western Undergraduate Exchange, being from California or Nevada. So with that 3.4 cumulative college GPA and an associate's degree, you are completely qualified for the WUI. Um, and then the University of Wyoming is offering in-person tours. Uh, we are one of, I think, the only institutions that has said we're going to be completely in-person for the fall of 2021. Uh, we've been in-person for the past semester, and we've been offering in-person tours the entire time. Um, so if you guys are interested in coming to the University of Wyoming, we'd love to chat with you. Um, come check out campus. Our summers are gorgeous. It's sunny and 75 degrees almost every day. Uh, so a perfect time to take a little summer break and come check out those wonderful outdoor activities. Here's all my contact information. I will also link it in the chat so you can go back and pull it out afterwards. Um, I'd love to chat with anyone. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And then that's about all I have for you guys. So have a great day. All right, thank you. And uh, next up we have University of Alaska Anchorage. Hi everyone, I am so happy to be with you all this evening. Uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the University of Alaska Anchorage, but I do definitely want to remind, um, as I do often, that this is just an invitation to start a conversation. So I hope that I will be talking with all of you in person in the future. I am the regional representative for California. I'm from Southern California myself, so I am happy to walk you through the application or answer any question that pops into your mind at the end of the presentation. I'll link my info in the chat here, and it's also at the on the last slide. So a little bit about Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, Anchorage is the largest city in Alaska. There are approximately 300,000 people. It's actually faster to fly to Anchorage from California than to drive across the state of California. So maybe not quite as far away as you were thinking. As the largest city, we consider ourselves to be in what we call the urban wild because yes, you do have access to all of that beautiful nature that Alaska is known for. You can see the Northern Lights and the glaciers. The city itself has over a hundred miles of trail that are intertwined around the city. You can take interesting classes in things like ice climbing and dog sledding. There is equipment re rental on campus, so you don't have to bring those things uh, to campus and you can learn how to do them. Uh, but at the same time, because we're in the largest city, we also have access to a downtown. Uh, you can see movies and concerts. Uh, and our downtown is a little bit different than other downtowns because the Iditarod goes right through the center. Uh, at UAA on campus, you are part of a thriving community of 12,000 students, approximately. So um, that means that there are enough students to really get involved in a lot of different student life activities. We have division one and two athletics. Uh, and so our big sports are basketball and hockey, uh, but we also have gymnastics and volleyball, cross country skiing, uh, and we have intramural sports and over a hundred clubs. So if you don't know what you're interested in, you'll definitely find some way to live your amazing story on campus. We also have an excellent student faculty ratio of 16 to 1, which means that about half of your classes have less than 20 students. And we think that for these reasons and more uh, are the reasons that we're ranked number one for a long term return on investment amongst our peer institutions. And essentially what that means is that we offer really high quality programs and students are getting jobs after graduation uh, for a relatively affordable price. Uh, so in terms of academics, you might be wondering, are we going to have the program that you're interested in? Well, as a mid-sized comprehensive, uh, that means that we have a lot of different program offerings. We actually have distinct colleges for uh, different areas. So we have a business college, an engineering college, a health college, a college for natural sciences, humanities, social sciences, 
and a college for uh, community technical education. Um, so essentially what that means is lots of different program offerings and well-developed infrastructure to support you. So if you come in and you're an undeclared student, we call them exploratory majors. We have first year advisors that will help you find what you're interested in. And exploratory studies is one of our most popular freshman majors. So you certainly won't be alone. Uh, while you are exploring, um, you can take some of those exciting electives that I mentioned, uh, or you can take courses across all of the, the different colleges. So lots of opportunities to really find your path. We really value exploratory uh, and um, experiential learning. So these cl classes aren't always going to be in the classroom. We take advantage of our location. You can be outside in nature learning. Uh, we want you to study natural sciences in nature. And that's something that's really unique um, to universities that uh, are in these uh, rural urban environments. And so uh, take a look at our academic offerings online. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, and then I also always like to highlight for my transfer students, my out of state students, that we are a WUI school. And my colleagues have mentioned that a little bit already, but uh, it's really important that we differentiate between WUI and out of state tuition because you will definitely be a WUI tuition at a WUI student at UAA. And that means that you actually can save money by going out of state. And that's not something that uh, you hear often. So I really like to dispel that myth. We are an open access university, which means that we don't have any special requirements for WUI. So you can know automatically that going in that you're going to qualify for that WUI tuition. We have wonderful opportunities to study abroad that I invite you to check out. We have some really unique partnerships that are only available uh, at UAA, like the North to North Exchange. Um, you have to be a part of the North. So only Northern universities can participate. So only a handful of universities in the US can. We have exciting events coming up for you to learn more. And I really invite you to do so. If you are wondering if your credits are going to transfer, I invite you to visit our Transfer Trails website where you can get an evaluation equivalency report uh, and gives you a really good idea of what that's going to look like. We really do try to be transfer friendly. So um, that should work out in your favor very well. Our whole application only takes about 15 minutes to complete. We're rolling admissions. So you can still submit your application now for the coming fall. I hope that uh, you'll reach out to me and we can talk a little bit more uh, about your specific interests in the future. And I hope to help you all become future Seawolves. All right, thank you so much. All right, next up we have University of Iowa. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Erin Monroe, and I am the California Regional Representative with the University of Iowa. Um, I am happy to share with you a little bit about what life as a Hawkeye is like. The University of Iowa is located in Iowa City. We are on the eastern side of the state, just 20 minutes away from the Cedar Rapids Airport. Um, we are a large public Big Ten institution and our home is a unique blend of high art and small city where town and campus come together to make one of America's definitive college towns. Pictured here is what our campus looks like. If you look closely, there's a river that organizes our campus into an east and west side. The building with the gold dome in the center of the photograph is the old Capitol building. It's actually the original capital of the state of Iowa before it moved to Des Moines in 1847. When that happened, the university purchased that building and that really became the center point and the heart of our campus. All of your courses and residence halls are within about a five to 10 minute walking distance of that building with the gold dome. This area of campus is directly across the street from downtown Iowa City which is home to more than 100 different local restaurants, shops, and boutiques. We reside in a micro urban city and have a population of about 200,000. Downtown is really an extension of our students' day-to-day -day campus life and aids in learning with internships and jobs, venues for the arts, and a variety of performances and festivals hosted throughout the year. 
the west side of campus, which is on the other side of the river flowing horizontally through the page, is home to the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, which is recognized as one of the best hospitals in the United States and provides professional development experiences for our students. At the University of Iowa, we have just over 31,000 students on our campus representing all 50 states in nearly 100 different countries. We have a large out-of-state population on our campus and our most populous states represented are Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and California coming in at number five. At Iowa, we are um, a school that is going to have a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. Our students really get to know their professors and build relationships with one another in the classroom. At Iowa, collaboration over competition really defines our academic culture. About 33% of our students participate in research where they work with professional faculty and staff. Um, we have an environment that really encourages you to inspire, discover, and innovate, and check out different fields of study in addition to what you may have a current interest in. We offer over 200 different areas of study that fall within the following colleges. For transfer students, we do offer direct um, admission into all of the colleges listed here. I'll post more information in the chat about the specific admission requirements. Um, but to talk a little bit more specifically about how students transfer into the University of Iowa. Um, if you are transferring in without an associate's degree, you need at least 24 semester hours of transferable credit with a coursework of about a 2.5 or higher. Um, if you are attending an Iowa Community College first, we also have a route of transferring to Iowa as well. Um, and they have some articulation agreements with both Iowa and Illinois Community Colleges. And then if you're transferring in with less than 24 semester hours of transferable credit, We'll look at all of your college coursework, but we'll also need that to be supplemented by your high school academic information. So we have a pretty transparent route of admission to the University of Iowa as a transfer student. We really encourage you to get connected with us early on in your application process and in discovering more about our institution so that we can best help to guide you in selecting courses if you do need to continue taking classes elsewhere and to help you with that timeline. If you're a transfer student who is considering applying to Iowa for fall 2021, we are still accepting transfer applications through July 15th. At our institution, our Hawkeyes are really busy both in and outside of the classroom. They're engaged in learning through their different experiences. We provide students with opportunities to develop their interests and choose experiences that align with their goals and help you to enhance their, your education both in and outside of the classroom. So we have over 500 different student organizations ranging from fraternity and sorority life to academic-based organizations, intramural and club sports, multicultural and religious organizations, anything that you can really think of. We're a school that's rich in pride, spirit, and tradition, and that comes out through our Division of Performing Arts, where we have over 400 performances each year put on by both students who are majoring in those art forms and our non-majors. Hancher Auditorium is a facility that really brings the professional arts and lectures to our campus. And so they've had speakers like Jane Goodall um, and Bill Nye, among many others, coming to work with our students. We offer 24 teams that compete within Big Ten, Division I, NCAA athletics. So we love to cheer on our Hawkeyes and sport the black and gold, both on game days and any other day of the week. I'll provide more information in the chat on how to connect with us, but I look forward to speaking with you if you have more questions about joining the Hawkeye family. All right, thank you so much. If I could have all of the panelists come back on screen, uh, we are going to go in the same order that you presented. If you could answer for folks, what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process, starting with the University of Alaska Fairbanks? Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, the first thing to do is uh, just get in touch with uh, your the admissions office at the school you're looking at, and uh, just maybe ask if you can be touch, put in touch with an academic advisor and just talk to a couple of different people, um, let them know where you're coming from. Um, but most schools uh, are really receptive to transfer students. 
And so, yeah, just, just ask the questions. There are no wrong questions. And uh, if you can, uh, maybe even ask to be put in touch with a, a, uh, a fellow student who's transferred into the school that you're looking at, uh, just to learn a little bit from the student perspective of somebody who's already transferred colleges. Um, echoing off of what Andrew mentioned, utilize us as your counselor. Um, I get apologies all the time from students. Like, I don't wanna bother you, but this is my job and I'm happy to help you through the process. Even if you just wanna know like, where do I live? What can I do? What, what, are, you know, what, what opportunities do you have? I think I speak for all of um, recruiters on the line and just saying we're happy to, to help you with anything you might need. I would also add, if you're able to visit campus, recognize that sometimes that can be challenging depending on if you're wanting to travel a little bit, but if you can come to campus, that gives you such a good idea of if that's a place you see yourself studying. So our students that come to Boise State and take a campus tour can really get a sense of if that's somewhere that they see themselves fitting in. So if you're able to travel and do a visit, Absolutely, that's a good way to get connected. A big thing I think, I mean, what everyone says is 100% true. Like you wanna see where you're going, reach out, talk to us. The best way to get information is to have those conversations. Um, call and see, you know, what credits are gonna to transfer to what your program is. You know, go to a school that has your program, things like that. Um, as a transfer student for myself, it was more so I wanted to go somewhere um, to where I knew I'd be able to graduate like as soon as possible. Um, but I think the best piece of advice is once you get there, regardless of where it is, get, get involved. Um, being a transfer student, um, non-traditional, you're going to be a little bit older, but it doesn't hurt to get involved, you know, join some clubs and organizations and get your foot out there. And it's much easier to meet new people that way. Yeah, I think everyone um, brings up excellent points. One thing I will mention is um, we have a system called transfer trails and other universities have similar systems that is essentially an online platform where you can just plug in courses you've taken and get a rough idea of if they're going to transfer. Those are that's really helpful just to get a first look, um, but you'll at some point need to move a little bit further in the process because it's not an official recommendation, but it can definitely be helpful as you're thinking about taking your coursework now. If you're not quite ready to transfer, it'll help you think about future coursework. And then also step outside your comfort zone. I give this advice to everyone, whether you're a first time freshman, transfer student, a graduate student, university, college is an excellent opportunity to try something new. I think my advice for students who are kind of in that search process is to get connected with current students on our campus. Um, we can get you connected to a transfer student or a professor in the area that you are wanting to study or a student in that same area so they can talk about what that day to day life and experience is like and what that transition into each institution has been for them. Sorry, my, my technology is being a little slow right now. So uh, I, I would love to add something. These folks are experts in, in really piggybacking off of what Deanna said is, is reach out to these folks. This is what they do. They really are here to help you find whether this is a good fit for you or not. So their contact information, I would say, is probably the most valuable information uh, that you could have gotten from this presentation. Uh, thank you so much to our experts, to our panelists. I'm with you and I know how hard it is to do this, especially when we are working remotely or, you know, you're working from different locations and having to figure out technology. It's incredibly tough. So thank you so much to our experts, our panelists. Thank you out there who are watching this recording or if you were able to attend this live. So important that you're engaging in this process uh, it is a good step in the right direction to make sure you do find the right fit for you. If you are here live, there's a quick survey when you leave. Appreciate it if you fill that out. There are more sessions this evening for this particular fair, but there will definitely be more in the future. And a recording of this is available on our website, but will also be sent out to everyone, all of our panelists and posted onto our website. Thank you again to our panelists. Thank you again to everyone watching. Uh, stay safe and have a great evening.